Now, the purpose of using a MIDI keyboard controller is so we can record or trigger MIDI sounds in our computer, whether it be a piano or a synth or a drum machine, or even just to control any parameter available inside Reaper. Now, there's most likely going to be two different options to choose from either a USB keyboard that plugs directly into your computer using a USB port, or an older keyboard that only has MIDI inputs or outputs available. In which case, you'll need either a computer audio interface that has MIDI connections or a dedicated MIDI device. But once it's set up, it should behave or work the same. Some MIDI keyboards can be pretty small with unweighted keys, while others can have as many as 88 weighted keys with piano like feel or action. But once again, once we set this up, they should behave in a similar way. You'll start by reading the instructions that come with your unit or device. Some require drivers or installers to get them working, while others are simply plug and play USB devices. But definitely check out the manuals that come with your unit and follow them and install anything necessary. And once everything is installed and plugged in, we can open Reaper and go to our preferences. Control P on the PC, Command Comma on the Mac. And that opens up the Preferences dialog. We can go to our MIDI inputs over here and our MIDI outputs over here. But you'll notice both the MIDI inputs and outputs are empty right now because I have them unplugged. Let's go back to the MIDI inputs. I'll plug them in to my computer and choose Reset All MIDI Devices. And now these two devices show up in MIDI input and also MIDI output right over here. So let's start with the MIDI inputs. This first one is an 88 key USB MIDI keyboard plugged directly into my computer. And the second one is a vintage MIDI keyboard plugged directly into my audio interface. So let's say we wanted to rename these so we know what they are. We could double click this one to open it and we can name it in here. But instead of renaming the device name, we could rename the alias name, as that'll be the name that shows up in our MIDI inputs. So I'll name this one USB MIDI Keyboard and close it. And let's rename this one Vintage MIDI Keys. And we could turn on each input over here. Just click in each box to turn them on. Notice that also turns on the All button, which means if we choose the input to our track, All MIDI Inputs, these inputs will all show up and will work at the same time. But we could turn these off if we want to. Let's leave them on for now. And we could also turn on Control, which will allow us to trigger actions in Reaper using our MIDI keyboard, using keys, knobs, or faders, or even control plugins in Reaper. Let's leave this off for now. And we can go to our MIDI outputs. And we could enable the MIDI outputs if we want to send MIDI information to the devices. And we could also send MIDI clock if you're using a sequencer or a drum machine to keep it in sync with Reaper. But let's turn that off for now and let's hit OK. And let's create a track by double clicking over here. Let's name it and we'll put it into record. And now we can set our inputs to MIDI right over here. Notice my USB MIDI keyboard shows up along with the vintage MIDI keys, which my MIDI keyboard plugged into my audio interface. And we can choose which one we want to use right here. But before we do that, notice we could also use the virtual MIDI keyboard. Let's see that over here by going to view and choosing the virtual MIDI keyboard, which looks like this and shows the keys as we play them. But we could also use this as a MIDI input. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you could choose it right here. Hit all channels. Now we could play the keys down here, like C, V, and B, and it shows up on the meter over here. But of course, we don't hear any sound just yet. But we could also use the virtual MIDI keyboard to see the input of our MIDI. So let's switch this to one of our actual MIDI keyboards. Let's use the USB MIDI keyboard. And if we play that keyboard, we see level on this meter. And again, 
we see it down here, which key we're playing. But again, we're not hearing any sound just yet. But we could also choose the other one, the vintage MIDI keys, which is a MIDI keyboard plugged in to my audio interface. Now, if we play that keyboard, again, we see MIDI input over here and also down over here. And we could also choose all MIDI inputs. Like I mentioned earlier, if we choose all in the preferences, we could hit any of the keyboards and they'll all work. So I could hit my USB MIDI keyboard, it works. I could hit my vintage MIDI keyboard and it works. And we could also use a computer keyboard and that works as well. But in order to hear sound on this track, we need to add a virtual MIDI instrument to the effects. Let's choose this and let's search in our filter for a synth. We could choose the Reasynth plugin right here, which comes with Reaper, so I know you have it. Double click it, and it looks like this. Let's make it more of a sawtooth wave. Now, if we play any of our keyboards, we now hear that synth, in addition to seeing it on the meter or seeing it down here. And we could also do it on my vintage MIDI keyboard as well. Or down here with our computer keyboard. So our MIDI is working in our system. So now we can start recording just like this. With our track and record, we could hit the record button or use the keyboard shortcut Control R on the PC or Command R on the Mac. With our metronome turned on, we'll get a count off. We could play along with that click track. And we're done, hit stop. We could take it out of record. And we could play back our MIDI part, which is now triggering our VST instrument. And of course, we could use any VST instrument we want, whether it be the synth that comes with Reaper or any third party plugins you want. So that's pretty much it. That's using a MIDI keyboard controller in Reaper. Hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.